So this is the last Android lollipop that we're going to build, and we're going to build for the emulator. But particularly, I want to look at uh, build logs, and then we're going to play around with the emulator, which that'll be a lot of fun, interesting things we can see. So we go CD into our Android lollipop, we run our build environment setup, and then we uh, run lunch, and we choose number one, which is just the, the generic ARM variation. So here we go, we're set up just like we've seen before, nothing new here. But what I wanna show you is when you run make and you choose you know, however many threads you want, one or two or however many, and then you can put this pipe in, it's usually above the enter key, and you write P, and we're gonna call this my build log.txt. So when I hit enter this time, things are gonna be a little bit different. In effect, everything that shows up in the terminal is gonna look the same as it always did before, but it's also gonna be written to an extra file. So here we see in the Android folder, this file doesn't exist yet. I push enter, <clears throat> excuse me, and there, that mybuildlogs.txt file shows up. So what's happening is the output that is put into the terminal is being teed by when you come to a fork in the road or a T in the road, you have the left and the right. Well, the left in this case is being put into the terminal so you can read it, we can scroll through it up and down, we look at the stuff that's being built. And then also you have the right side, which is being teed into this folder, this file. And so we open that file up with gedit or gedit. And here what we see is a mirror of what's written in the terminal. And notice though that the terminal is continuing to update. I open an instance of this file and that instance is not updating. Once I close this file and open it again, it'll have the latest information in it. But you might ask, why would you do this? Why would it matter? So here I open it up again, take a look, and you know, new information has been put in there. The reason you would do this is the terminal can only hold so much information. Now you set that terminal to hold as much information as, as you want. That's in the preferences and settings for Ubuntu in this case. But sometimes you want to look through the log for something that maybe didn't stop the um, build. Uh, something like a warning that you might want to fix, but it didn't actually halt the build itself. And you want to see some particular piece of information. Well, you scroll back up through the terminal and it only goes so far back. So you can't get to the bottom of whatever it is you want to look at. Also, if you're building with lots of threads, like a J16, J32, you might have an error and that error message then is only on one thread. And so the other 31 threads have to finish building what they're building, and then it stops. Well, that amount of information might be too much for you to actually scroll back and see what the error was. So you may not be able to figure it out uh, right away. And running with this T and making your own build log is a really handy way to make sure you get that information captured in a file that can be as long as you want, as long as it needs to be, and you can open that up at any time. and uh, and see the information of, of your build. So really handy way to do things. I highly recommend that you use build logs um, to make sure you're capturing all the information and data that you need. Now here I'm just looking at it, you can see that the file is in fact growing. So uh, the only thing is it will change the terminal. Notice before the terminal was color coded, and now it is not. And so those color codings don't get written into the terminal when you use the T command like we're doing now.